table just to make sure we haven't done anything wrong, but how much do you need, like bare minimum? Two. two. Barely, yeah, just two. Here's how you can graph a line. I'm just going to give you one example because you have seen this before. Here's how you can graph a line directly from your slope intercept. Okay, if you're not catching this, go back and watch this video again because this is, this is it. This, it only takes like one or two times to really explain how you do it. If you have your slope and you have your y-intercept, you can graph any line. You start with your y-intercept, which in our case was what up here, everybody? Three. Three? We all clear on the three, right? Like getting that three from right here, that is our y-intercept. The y-intercept says where you're crossing your y-axis. So where we are crossing our y-axis, is it positive three? We go to positive three, we put a point. That's our y-axis, that's our y-intercept. So far so good? Okay. <clears throat> now, what's our slope? Oh, so it goes with that sign as well, right? So that negative up front, that matters. Here's how you use your slope in conjunction with your y-intercept to graph your line. Now, our slope is negative one-half. Can you tell me what is the rise of this slope? Negative one. Negative, wait a minute. The rise is negative one. If the rise is negative one, are we going up or are we going down? down. What's the run? The run is 2. Listen, the negative or the lack of a negative tells you whether you're going up or down. You will always, I hope you listen to this, you will always go to the right. Always. You are never going to go to the left. You're always going to go up or down, depending on positive or negative, and then to the right. Not sure if you're with me on that. Always to the right. That's how run works. The negative tells you down. Down how many? And then over to the right, how many? Two. Two. This is what this tells you to do. Now, the question is, where do I do this from? Do I do this from my origin, or do I do this from the point that I just plotted? Point. Yeah, from the point. We need two points, right? Here's one of them. The slope tells you how to get from point to point. That's what this does. So if I have a point at three, positive three on the y-axis, how to get to my next point says, oh, you're going to go, look at down, because it's negative. Down, one, that's my rise and then over to the right two. So from my point that I just plotted, I go down one, I go over two, and we do that in combination, and then we put a point. You don't put like 14 little points over here every time you move. You just go down one, over two, and then you put your point. So here is my y-intercept at three. I went down one, I went to the right two, because we always go to the right two, and I put another point. Is that enough for me to make my line? Yeah, it looks like it. I could keep going, right? I could go down one over two, down one over two. But it's always going to make a straight line for us. So as long as we do this correctly the first time, we've got it. Oh, not as good as yesterday. Not even close. Do you remember yesterday? Not so much. Anyway, this is good enough for us right now. I want you to notice something and compare this to what we did yesterday. Yesterday, our graph was going like this. Right? Do you remember that? And we had a positive 3x there. On this graph, we're, go we're going down. Why is that? So positive slope, we're going to go up. Negative slope, we're going to go down. That should make sense to us, right? Positive means we're always climbing. Negative means we're always falling. We're always going to the right, so that tells us whether we're going to be a graph going upwards or a graph going downwards. Let me show what we just talked about, the whole slope graph. Good, okay. Now, the second form of equation that we're going to get, we're going to be using this one a lot in this class. Is that one. So, we have another form. It's obviously not slope-intercept because we just talked about this. This also is not very original. I mean, the name, it, it's, not, it's not a cool name or anything. It's just a name based on what you need to make this function of. And what you need to make this function of is, well, tell me a letter up here that you, you recognize, besides the x and the y. These x and the y, that is your variable right there. What's, what's another letter up here that you know? What's your m? So it's going to have a slope in it somewhere. Uh, the other thing, the x1, the y1, what's that mean? Well, any time that you see an x with a little 1 there and a y with a little 1 there, or anything with a subscript, not a superscript like an exponent, a subscript here, that stands for an actual point, like a specific point. x and y will be your variables, 
This stands for some point, like 2 comma 3 or negative 1 comma 4. That's a specific point. So what this is, is this is a point, this is the slope, this is called point slope. Very original, right? <laughs> So this was slope intercept because it had the slope, then the intercept. This is point slope because you have a point and the slope. M is still your slope, which is rise of a run. And x1 comma y1 is a specific point. So some specific point on the line. Point on the line. You know, there's one more that I will talk about. Let's call this uh, form number three. These are the two major ones that you're going to be working with. Form number three is kind of a it's a it's a nice little easy thing. There's not a whole lot of work you can do. You just need to recognize it. It's when y equals a constant. <coughs> When y equals a constant, we talked about this a while back um, in your, your appendix, your, your review section. If y equals a constant, is there an x variable? Which means you cannot have an x-intercept. No crossing this axis right here. If you don't cross this axis right here, how's your line going to look? Horizontal. Yeah, it can't possibly be like this, can it? Or like this. Or like this. It's got to be horizontal. So y equals c is going to be a horizontal line. In fact, do you have an m? Yes. If you don't have an m, your slope is zero. So your m or your slope is zero, meaning that you're not rising, you're not falling, you're just like this. So you're horizontal. So hopefully that logic makes sense to you. If there's no slope, the slope is zero. If there's a slope is zero, that would be infinite slope. This would be infinite slope right here. That would be horizontal slope or a slope of zero. So we're a horizontal line. So there's no slope, m or slope equals zero. This means we're a horizontal line. Uh, question, do we have a y-intercept? Are we going to cross the y-axis? Yeah. Sure, horizontal line will cross the y-axis. Where? Sure. So the constant says you're always this number, right? So if y equal 3, we'd always be at 3. If y equal 7, we'd always be at 7. So we're going to cross that, well, that, that specific number. So the y-intercept will be uh, 0 comma c. 0 for the x, and then c for the y-intercept. We cross at that constant. Maybe we'll practice a couple of those in just a bit. By the way, let's try something really fast. Just to let me make sure that you understand uh, this, these equations here, these forms. Let's see if we can write the equation that has a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 0, 3 fourths. The 0, 3 fourths just says you're on the y-axis. The 0 says you're going over on the x, and the 3 fourths says you're going up 3 fourths on the y. So that, therefore, is our, our y-intercept. Which form is going to be of the best use for us? Let's look over here. Is it going to be y equals a constant? Is our slope equal to 0, specifically? What is your, what is your slope in this example? Okay, so we're certainly not horizontal. We are going either up or down. Okay, uh, what was the slope again? Okay, very good. Um, so we have to choose between the slope intercept and the point slope. Now here's how you choose. This does have a point and it does have a slope. 
But you want to be as specific as you can. Do we have the y-intercept in our case? Does it say y-intercept up there? Yes. So you have the y-intercept. If it didn't say y-intercept or it didn't give you a zero comma a number, you'd be right here using point slope. In fact, if you really want to, you can do this problem with point slope. This one will always work for you, provided you have the slope and a point. It's fine. But we can make this a little bit easier. We can do slope intercept. So we just need to identify what is our M and what is our B. What is our M up here, ladies and gentlemen? Good, because that's our slope. And somebody else, can you identify the B? The B would be the value of the y-intercept. How much is the y-intercept? Let's see if we have enough to do this. We have the M, we have the B. What goes in place of the Y and the X? Anything? Those are your variables, right? That's how you make the rest of your, your line, just by plugging in X's and getting a Y. So you don't plug anything in for those. So we'd say, okay, well, Y equals, we're going to substitute in the negative 2 for the M. We're going to substitute in the 3 fourths. Since the 3 fourths is positive, we're going to put plus. If it had been negative 3 fourths, we would be putting minus 3 fourths. That's our equation of our line that's in the slope intercept form because we were given the slope and the y intercept. But you're going to feel all right with that example. Good, okay. Now, are you always given the slope and are you always given the y intercept? No. Rarely, rarely, not often at all. I mean, this is a very basic example because I gave you both parts to that that formula, that, that function. So typically what you're given are just two points. And so if we're going to find the, the equation of a line like we just did, and you're given two points, and you're not given a slope, well, we first better find a way to find a slope. Isn't that, isn't that right? You with me? Let, me? let me make something very clear to you. Um, when you're finding the equation of a line, the minimum you must have is a point and a slope. If you don't have a point and a slope, this point slope, right? You need this and this. You're rarely going to be given this and this. Rarely, rarely. That was a, a very special case. We typically use this one and make it look like this one later. That's what happens. So you're always, almost always, going to be using point slope. So what do you need to make the line? You need the point and you need the slope. Okay, that, that's the minimum. You have to have that. I'm not sure if you're understanding that. You've got to have that. So we have to find a way to find the slope. And that's what we're going to be doing. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to invent this with you. Just so you're not like, well, that's a great formula. I have no idea what it means. Because I'm sure you've seen the slope formula before. Uh, but maybe no one's ever really talked you through how this is invented. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope between any two points. When something in math says between any two points, it doesn't mean specific points. Like find the slope between 1, 3 and 4, 5. Okay, it means that I want to come up with a formula so that I can plug any two points in there and it gives me the correct slope, right? Because we don't want to have to reinvent the slope formula every single time we do a problem. That would be totally lame. Totally, totally lame. So what we're going to do is instead of giving specific points, we're going to pick like general points. So we can't use specific numbers. Well, wait a second. If I pick two general points like this, I say this isn't 1, 2, and this isn't like 7, 5, or whatever it is. If I, don't, if I say these are two, two general points, how in the world can we label these things? How does every point in the world look? Every point in the world has a certain form.